3.20. Any questions that you would like me to go over? This is your chance to ask. 1E, okay? 1E is tricky, okay? What's the exponent in 1E? A 4, okay? It's not a quadratic. It's going to show up as a quadratic. Now, I do say, what's the first thing that you always, 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 always... Okay, check for a GCF. There is not a greatest common factor. Count the number of terms. How many? Two. Is there a minus sign? Is it perfect square, perfect square? So this is going to start out as difference of squares. It's going to be the square root of secant to the fourth is secant squared. Is that okay, Amy, so far? And then it would be uh, plus one minus one or minus one plus one. When you look in the back, they haven't stopped there. And the reason is they've looked at each factor. Look at this one, first of all. GCF? No. How many terms? Minus sign? Can't factor that one. GCF? G no. How many terms? Two. Minus sign? Oh, perfect square, perfect square? Oh, this one goes further. So I'm going to drop the unfactorable term down. That's a factor. And I'm going to get, come on, Pam. Oh, there's a sneeze for the internet. He already has, thanks. Secant theta plus 1. Secant theta and minus 1. So did I put one like that on the test? Um, probably not. Probably not. I, you know what? The, the, that would show up on a provincial as, ooh, we got to put a couple of tricky multiple choice questions. What can we do? This would be in that vein or that level because I would hope it would be multiple choice. I would hope you would glance at your answers and you would say, oh, some of these answers have three factors, but I only got two. Oh, I bet you one of these breaks down further. Like, I hope you would make that chain of reasoning. As a written, this would not get on the provincial, and I would not put this on the test. Is that okay? Oh, and if this was an, an equation, you have equals zero. You would get roots here and here. Here you would get secant squared. That's supposed to be a plus sign. Uh, you would get secant squared equals negative one. And when you try taking the square root of both sides, you can't take the square root of negative. Uh, this, this one actually has no roots when you try solving the actual equation. These two would. Any others? Hmm. Ah, great question. 6b. <sighs> 6b is sneaky. Okay? How many terms are there, grand total, even before we start? Four. I won't put this on a written. I'd feel okay as a multiple choice. I'd graph left side, graph right side, and find where they cross. 6b, this is going to be called factoring by grouping, not groping, Matt. Grouping, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, leave this here temporarily. I'll come back to it. GCF. And the fact that this and this are the same tells me why this is going to be a factoring by grouping. I'm going to move this guy over now. Factoring by grouping says this. When you have four terms, you cover up the last two. In my mind, I would cover up these two. And you factor a GCF out of the first two. We already have. Then you repeat that same procedure. You cover up the first two, factor a GCF out of the last two. Now there is one, negative one. You got this? I'm impressed. You are smarter than you look. No, well, make that a compliment. My 
Japan is working like a slug. I'm probably have to reboot my machine a bit later. And why does this work? Well, and again, this is an advanced one. This will not be on your test. Tyler, what do you see here? What do you see here? That's also a GCF. There is a cos x plus 1 in both terms. I can factor out a cos x plus 1. Assuming my pen decides to write. And I can factor out a 2 sin x minus 1 left behind. That's what that factors into. And now you can say, what are the roots? Uh-oh. We'll talk later, sir. I'm not even going to let you roll a dice of fate, because I had a promise from you. I thought, I thought, I thought. Uh, you would get this. Cos x equals negative 1. There's one root. Sin x equals 1 half. And both of those are very solvable. We do have a triangle with a 1 and a 2 in it. Uh, negative 1. Ah, alarm bell. Uh, unit circle or sketch the graph. I'm not going to give you a factoring by grouping on your test. I always assign it because it's good discussion to let you know, hey, think outside of the box. And I'm kind of curious to see who could actually come up with that because I could argue all I did was factor out a GCF and then factor out a binomial GCF twice. But that's a little weird. You got far? I'm impressed. Any others? then you want to get out your graphing calculator. We have two short lessons today. I'm going to do two because they're both short. Lesson three, if you'd be so kind as to turn to page 325. I think it's, yeah, 325. And it says as it's heading... Equations which require a graphical solution. This is why you need your graphing calculators, and it's got to be a graphing calculator. You need your graphing calculators there. And you want to make sure you're in radians if you're not already. And you know what? I better boot up my graphing calculator. And I better make sure that I'm in radians. Mode. Ah, I am. And it says this, some equations cannot be solved by an algebraic approach. In these cases, we use a graphical approach to estimate the solution. Now, here's how you're going to know this, first of all, in real math life and then uh, for the test. In real math life, you'll have an equation that has some trig and some non-trig x's. Or several different trig functions and you can't do anything with them. That's how you know in real life. On the test, here's how you'll know this. It's going to be, what does MC stand for on a test? Okay, it's going to be multiple choice, and you'll glance at your answers, and you'll notice that all of your answers, instead of pi by somethings or three pi by somethings, all of your answers are decimals. And in fact, what I'll start teaching you for your next test, not your Valentine's test, but your next one is, hey, on the multiple choice, always glance at the answers first. That's your trigger. Watch. Yeah, I know it's already running twice. Maybe that's why you're running slow. Click. Look up. So here's a, where's my provincial exam? New course provincial exams. Here is from... April 2001, I think that is, or January 2004. Let me make this a bit bigger. But you'll be able to see or recognize a trig question that you have to do. Oh, right there. How did I spot it so fast, Jesse? Look at my answers. See them? That easy. What that means is don't try and do this algebraically. Don't bother. Graph left side. Graph right side and find where they cross. And in fact, that's the first part of today's lesson. So it says, consider the equation 3 sine x equals x. Use the following method to graph between 0 and 2 pi. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up my graphing calculator. I'm going to let y1 be my left side. So my left side of my equation is 3 
sine x. I'm going to let y2 be the right side x. Now I'm noticing in the notes he has y1 be x and y2 be 3 sine x. Doesn't matter. Just graph one side, graph the other side. Oh, before I hit graph, though, I'm going to change my view window a little bit. What domain do they want me to look for a solution in? So I'm going to go x min 0, x max 2 pi. Good scale. If I'm not sure, I almost always pick pi by 6. That's 30 degrees. That's kind of my fallback scale. What about my y's? Well, oh, what's the amplitude of this? I'm going to go from negative 4 to positive 4 then, because that graph goes 3 up and 3 down, and I would like very much to center it. Y scale, yeah, ones. X res, never touch graph. There's 3 sine x. Oh, first of all, how many answers, how many solutions are there? Can you see? Two. Um, you'll often find on a provincial, you can cross off half your wrong answers just by looking at the number of solutions. And you'll often find, so let's suppose, well, well, we'll do this one in just a second, but let's find the roots of this. How do I find the solutions? It's going to be second function. Where was the intersection? Find where they cross feature. Calculate. Intersection. Then it asks first curve. That is the first graph I want it to use, so I just hit enter. Then it asks second curve. That is the second graph that I want to use, so I just hit enter. Then it wants to make a guess. I'll move my cursor close to that root there. You know why? I'm pretty sure I can tell you what the other intersection point is. What does the other intersection point look like it is to you? Zero, zero. So I'm not going to waste my time. And I hit enter. 2.278. We have x1 equals zero. x2 equals, oh, they only said to the nearest tenth, even easier, 2.3. Now, the only tricky part here is we've talked about the general solution. That was where the graph repeated over and over. Take a look at this equation here. Are they going to cross as I move to the right ever again? Nope. I think they probably cross back down here. If they did ask for a different domain, I would just change my view window. So I'm not going to worry about the general solution. Let's try this one together. So you guys, is that big enough for you to read? You know, I can make it larger. Here's the equation. Solve sine x equals 3 cos x. And right away, Alex, I know that it's graphing calculator because I glanced at my answers. They're decimals. So I'm going to graph left side 2 sine x. I'm going to graph right side cos 3x. What's my domain? Uh, 0 to 2 pi. So I'm pretty good, I think, with my view window. And uh, what's my amplitude here? So you know what? Negative 4 to 4 will work. I'm going to rush because I'm writing a test. I'm going to hit graph. There's 2 sine x. There's cos 3x. Anybody not getting it? Sorry, I should ask. We okay? You don't get the uh, left side, right side, right side. Y1 is this, Y2 is that. What you're saying is where these are equal is where they'll cross on a graph. By the way, how many answers? So I would hope on the test you would cross off C and D. Now look at my remaining two answers. My first answer for A is 0.3. My second answer for A is 2.83. Do you think that x value right there is 0.3 or 2.83? If this is 0 to 2 pi, that's really 0 to 6.2. I think 2.8 is over here somewhere. You actually don't even need, for this particular example, 
really don't need to even bother finding where they cross. You can just clue in. It's A, but let's find where they cross just for the practice. Second function, calculate. Intersection. First curve, second curve. Let's go find the first answer. My guess is, oh, right about there, I'll hit enter, and that should get me right at the intersection point. And lo and behold, it does. And I would quit here. Because it's multiple choice. And hopefully you're good enough test writers now that you've learned where you can cut corners on your test. Oh, if I finished the test early and I got time to kill, yeah, I'd probably come back and find the second route. I mean, why not? But Just for practice, though, because this is not a test for doing this as an example, let's practice finding the second route because there's some... Is it working, by the way? We're good? Second function, calculate, intersection. First curve, second curve. Now I'll move my guess to where they cross over here. Looks like they cross uh, right about there. Enter. 3.448. There it is. 0.31, 3.45. Okay. Would they ask for a y value, you mean? No. Nope. No, nope, because what you're solving, what, what variable was in the equation? x. You're solving for x. Okay. Um, it says, uh, example one, turn the page, page 326. It says, use a graphical approach and the zero feature. I'm not a big fan of the zero feature. I'm actually going to cross this out. You can make these equal to zero. And remember, we did find roots, but you had to do left bound, right bound, sandwich. The intersection one is so much faster. I will always graph left side, right side, and find where they cross. So let's solve this. How do I know that I have to use a graphing calculator? Well, they said it. Yeah, okay. What if they didn't? Do I have some trig and some non-trig? Graphing calculator. Or uh, calculus, have you guys learned Newton's method for solving equations yet? Okay. One of the great, one of the many, 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 many great things about derivatives is you can use derivatives to solve any equation. You use it to make a guess, and then use the guess to make a better guess, and you use the better guess to make an even better guess. And within about four trials, you're accurate to about eight decimal places. It's called Newton's approximation method, because it never gets you the exact answer. It approximates it. But if you're accurate to within eight decimal places, that's pretty close. Ready? Left graph. x to the power of 3 minus x squared. x x, come on, Mr. Duick, squared. Right side, 2 sine x. Did they give me a domain here? No. So I'm going to be a little bit paranoid. I'm actually going to go from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi just in case there, it crosses in the negative area because I, I have no idea what this looks like. So I'm going to go from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi, just in case there is a negative solution. And uh, uh, how high? Well, amplitude of 2. You know what? Negative 4 to 4 works pretty good. Let's see what this looks like. Ah, look at that. There is a negative solution. I might have missed that. Oh, in fact, how many solutions are there grand total? Can you see? Three. Oh, by the way, every once in a while, they'll simply ask you how many solutions are there as a multiple choice question. So, okay, three. Let's find them. First one. Second function, calculate. First curve, second curve. And let's find the first one, which is over here. Negative point nine, uh, what does it say? Give answers to the nearest tenth. So I guess this is going to be uh, negative point nine. X1 equals negative point nine. X2 equals, I think, zero, zero, but uh, I'm not quite positive. I'll double check. 
since this isn't multiple choice, I'll be a bit more paranoid. First curve, second curve. Uh, yeah, I thought so. Zero. And find X3 on your own. I'll freeze the screen. Let's see if we get to the same spot. I got 1.7. Okay. Oh, by the way, remember the quadratics we did yesterday? You can use this to check your answers. The only problem is we did some with exact values, and this gives you decimal answers. But could you convert pi by 6 to a decimal to see if it was the same decimal as yours? You can, on this next test, check your answers. However, when I mark the trig equations, I only give you one mark out of four for the answers. So if you use this to find the answers and you show no other work, the best you're getting is 25%. So that was lesson number one, short lesson. What's your homework? Try number one. Number four. Number five. What was that, Miguel? You want to do more? Is that what I heard from over there? I heard you just, Mr. Duick, please give me more math work. I'm going to, because I'm going to do a whole new lesson. Can you turn to lesson four, please? I thank you. No, you're the best. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you remember, but last day, when we did the quadratic equations, I said, uh, when we were finding the general solution. What's the period? Is there any B? No, and I always said, we're going to put a B in in a couple of days. Here it is. We're going to change the period. So this is also nice because it's good review of solving trig equations, which is on your Valentine's Day test. It's a little bit tricky, and I don't think the book does enough practice. So I'm actually going to, once we're done this, find a blank page, and we're going to do a couple more. It says this, solving equations involving multiple angles. And the first thing it says is we're going to introduce a graphical approach. I've already told you I'm not big a fond of the graphical approach. We will use cast reference angle. And then I'm going to add one more little trick, substitution. The author walks through lovely graphical examples. Forget it, 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 forget it. Page 330, it says, solve a multiple angle equation using a graphical approach. Forget it, 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 forget it. Page 331, it says, solve it using an algebraic approach. This is what we're going to do. Take a look at example two. Is there something in front of the x? Okay, that you have to spot. That I can't help you spot, Amy. That you've got to pick out. Okay, soon as I see that, the first thing that I do in big writing in the margins so that I don't forget is I say the period is 2 pi over b, which in this case is pi. Because I'm worried that when I do my general solution, I'm so used to going plus 2 pi n, I'll just go plus 2 pi n. No, ah, 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 period here. It's going to be plus pi n. So I started doing that a few years ago. Big letters. What don't you like about this equation, though? The answer, I think, for most of you is that 2x. If that was just an x, hopefully for all of us, this would be a yawner. I got a triangle with a 1 and a 2 in it. Cosine is positive. Cast rule to one, two, root three triangle. Which angle has a cosine of one half, the top one? Pi by three, and away you'd go. So what don't we like? The two x. My method, not using a graphing calculator, is well, if I don't like the two x, I'm gonna temporarily get rid of it. I'm gonna say this. Temporarily, I'm gonna let the letter A equal two x. 
What I'm going to solve here, Matt, is this equation. Cos A equals 1 half. Except let's bring the negative in and let's make that 2 work. Sorry. Cos A equals negative 1 half. Okay. This I like. Fact. Jesse, which trig function? Negative or positive? Let's go Castro. C A S T. I am positive. We're here or here. Do I have a triangle? Oh, it did say exact values, so I know I must have a triangle with a 1 and a 2 in it. Why, yes, it's the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Which angle has a cosine of 1 half, the bottom one or the top one? How big? So if I hear you correctly, this is pi by 3 and this is pi by 3. Now, I'm not solving for x. What letter am I solving for right now to make life easier? So can you tell me what a1 is? And can you tell me what a2 is? By the way, this is totally fair game for Valentine's Day, yes? Okay. So what is a1? What is a2? 2 pi by 3? 4 pi by 3. In other words, my first step area, I write the period, and then I temporarily get rid of the thing that bugs me, except we weren't solving for A. What were we solving for, really? Alex. Well, X. How are A and X related? Can you read that out to me, please? So I'm going to argue that A1 is the same as 2X1. Is that okay? Dylan, yeah? Oh, how would I get the x by itself? Ah, you see how I pulled that off? Rather than deal with that stupid period change, ignore it temporarily, put a different variable there just so you don't get confused, solve for that different variable, and then do the period change after you've done all the tough trick. How would I get the x by itself? You were right, say it again. I'm going to have an extra 2 in the bottom. X1 is going to be 2 pi. Dividing by 2 would put a 6 down there. Because there's already a 3 down there, yes? Oh, in lowest terms, what is X1? There's my first root. Ari, <coughs> excuse me. Ari, how are A and X related? Can you read that out to me, please? That was our little substitution that we just made up, right? So if I want to find x2, I would argue that 2x2 equals 4 pi by 3. I'm replacing a with 2x, but since it was a2, I'll call it x2 just to be organized. And Ari, how would I get x2 by itself? Divide by 2. Can you see you'll get 4 pi over what? 6, can we reduce that in one step? Are we okay with that? I'm going to write down here x2 equals 2 pi by 3. Here's where this gets a tiny bit more challenging. There could be more in our domain. I have found 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the period to each of these. I'm going to find a coterminal angle. And if that's less than 2 pi, it's also a solution. Let's find out. Add pi to this. Am I really going to add pi? What am I really going to add in my head? 3 pi by 3. So if you add 3 pi by 3, is there a third x value that satisfies this equation that's still less than 2 pi? x3 is going to be pi by 3 plus pi, 4 pi by 3 is also a root. It's also a solution between 0 and 2 pi. And I'll prove that to you on my calculator 
in a little bit. I'm also going to do this with x2. If I add the period to this, am I still less than 2 pi? That's also a solution then. There is an x4, which is going to be 2 pi by 3 plus pi, plus 3 pi by 3. It's going to be 5 pi by 3. Matt, there may be another one. I'm going to add the period to these two. And if I'm still less than 2 pi, those are also solutions in our given domain. If I add pi to this one, am I bigger than 2 pi? Oh, okay, I'm out of my domain. Put your pencils down and look up. See, here's really what's happening. My domain is 0 to 2 pi. My first equation is cosine of 2x. My second equation is negative a half. Now, if I didn't have this 2 here, if I just had that, we would have this graph. There's cosine. There's negative a half. How many answers? 2. But if I put a 2 there, that's a horizontal compression by a factor of 2. There's going to be two cosine waves occurring in the same distance. That's why I got four answers. I found the first two cleverly, and then I said, well, I'll add my period to get that one. I'll add my period to get that one. Oh, um, hey, hey, hey. What if there had been a... Uh, you know how many cosine waves are going to fit in? Three. There's going to be six answers. I would uh, put a 3x there. I would uh, get a1 and a2, and I would figure out what x1, x2. I end up having to keep adding until I'm out of the domain. Keep adding the period until I'm out of the domain. So four answers. B says state the general solution. The general solution is going to be my first two primary ones, which were pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3. plus multiples of the period. Not 2 pi n. What did I write in great big letters right away? What's my period? Plus pi n, where n is an integer. If they give me a period change, what's my strategy? First of all, make a big note that there's a period change and what's the new period? Then I ignore it. I'll temporarily substitute a nicer variable in solve it, do all the trig, and then once I've finished that, I'll do whatever arithmetic I need to do to take the period into account. Then I'll keep adding the period until I'm out of my domain. Oh, it says uh, complete the following statement. The general solution consists of answers which differ by pi radians because the cosine of 2x has a period of pi radians. <laughs> It wants us to jump into the homework. We're going to go back one page, please, to page 330. But instead of solving this one with a graphical approach, we're going to solve it with an algebraic approach. Okay. Given tan 2x equals root 3 between 0 and 2 pi, find the exact values of x. And I'm going to cross out using a graphical approach. You have to notice that there is, in this case, a b. What is the b? What's the period? Ooh, ugly cousin, right? Period here is not 2 pi over b. It's pi over b. The period here is pi over 2. All right. Temporarily... To make things less confusing, I'm going to solve this. I'm going to let a equal 2x. Why do you use the letter a? Because they hardly ever use it as a variable, so I know it's safe. 
I'm going to solve tan A equals root 3. Root 3 over what, by the way? Do I have a triangle with a 1 and a root 3? Okay, I can do this. Erwin, which trig... Oh, tan, I can't ask you. Uh, Matt, which trig function? C, A, S, T. Uh, what quadrant are we in? Oh, positive, right, Matt? So here and here. Sorry, we don't have much room to write because they're expecting us to do this graphically. You're going to have to kind of smoosh your writing a little bit. We said we have a triangle. We said it's the 1, 2, 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Which angle has a tangent of root 3, the bottom one or the top one? Top one. Once again, this is going to be pi by 3. Oh, the answers are always pi by 3. No, it's just the two examples happen to have that in there. So Matt, can you tell me what A1 is? Pi by 3. Now let's see how good we are. Take a look at this. How would you get the x by itself? Divide by 2. So can you tell me, Matt, what x1 is going to be? It's going to be A divided by 2. There's going to be an extra 2 down there. It's going to be what? Pi by 6. Is that okay? Are you asking us to do some math on our heads? You're mediocre at fractions now, yes? We have entered the land of mediocrity. We can expect you to do some basics. Dividing is the same as putting that number in the bottom of a fraction. Oh, uh, what's uh, A2? Matt? 4 pi by 3. What's x2? Let's see. It would be dividing by 2, an extra 2 down there, except I don't want you to say to me 4 pi by 6. Please reduce a fraction in your head. We're mediocre now. What are you giving me? I think we're going 2 pi by 3. Okay, I better write it out. It's 4 pi by 6, which is 2 pi by 3. Okay. Ah, there may be more. Now, I'll be honest. Because you're going to be allowed to use your graphing calculator on the next test, you could graph this between 0 and 2 pi, and you could find out how many answers there are. I'm just going to say, what if I don't? I'm going to see if I can anticipate. I'm going to add the period. Oh, what's my denominator here? I'm going to add... 3 pi by 6, because I'm going to find a common denominator right away. Ready? Add 3 pi by 6 to 1 pi by 6. What do we get? 4 pi by 6. You know what? We've already mentioned that. Right? So let's add the period to this one. 4 pi by 6 plus 3 pi by 6. equals 7 pi by 6. Is that less than 2 pi? Yeah, okay, so that's the solution. Um, x4 would be, let's see if we add the period to this one. Are we still less than 2 pi? And hopefully you're recognizing, you can kind of even do some of this in your head. 7 pi plus 3 pi is what, Ian? 10 pi by 6, is that less than 2 pi? What would 2 pi be in terms of 6, Troy? 12 pi. Really, I'm, I'm saying as long as I'm less than 12 pi by 6, I'm good. So uh, x4 is going to be 10 pi by 6, although I'd probably reduce that to 5 pi by 3. Is there a fifth solution? Well, if you add 3 pi by 6 to 10 pi by 6, 13 pi by 6, oh, we're just out. Okay.
state the general solution. I think the general solution is going to be your first one, pi by 6, plus multiples of the period. I think that one actually generates every single following answer. Is that right? Yep. You okay with the pi by 2? Yeah. 2 times what is 6? Same to the top. Right? 3 over 6 is the same as 1 half. Is that okay? Yep. Do you want me to make up one more, or do you guys feel okay? We do. That's why I'm asking. Do you want me to make up one more, or do you guys feel okay? One more? Okay. Do you have room uh, where your answers are at the end of this lesson? Is there room at the bottom of the page? No? Which one? Oh, previous answers, 320, there's room? Okay, I'll do mine right here. Apparently, page 320, you have lovely room. Oh, page 328, that's what I said. Can't you, boy, your listening skills are terrible. Sign I'll make it equal root 3 over 2 so it's going to be an exact value lovely lovely going to give you a 0 less than or equal to theta less than 2 pi and let's do something kind of yucky here let's see Five x over two. I guess technically that means there should be an x there. You don't need to change yours, but I will because I'm just fussy. Okay. What you know? What the most common mistake that I see, and I should mention this because it drives me crazy. When student, a lot of stuff drives you crazy. Yeah. When students get a question like this, I'll see them go, "Oh, divide by two, and they'll make that a four they'll somehow divide something from inside a trig function. You, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. So we've got to just deal with it. First of all, what's the period? Well, it's 2 pi over b. How do I divide by a fraction? It's going to be, it's going to be what? 4 pi over 5, right? Temporarily, I'm going to let a equal 5x over 2, and I'm going to solve sine a equals root 3 over 2. Going to use the cast rule. Sign is positive here and here. Do I have a triangle with a root 3 and a 2 in it? Yep. Our famous 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Which angle has a sine of root 3 over 2? Oh, for Pete's sakes, it's pi by 3 again. I told you, Mr. Duke, they're all pi by Shut up, they're not. Pi by 3, pi by 3. So here's what I end up with then. 
my first root before I bring the period back in is pi by 3. My second root before I bring the period back in is what? 2 pi by 3. Okay. How would I get the x by itself? Well, what's the 5 doing to the x mathematically? Times ing, so I'll divide. What's the 2 doing to the x mathematically? Dividing, so I'll. In other words, I'm going to argue that x1 is going to be the 2 on top and the 5 on the bottom along with the 3. Yes? By the way, this is probably just slightly tougher than I've ever seen. Is this, well, they could probably do this on multiple choice, I guess, because when there's multiple choice answers, it's a little easier. Written uh, a little over the top. Yucky fractional period. Um, X2 is going to be this one here. Times by 2. Divide by 5 times by 2, divide by 5. Amy, what's my denominator in both of these, by the way? I'm going to write the period out of 15 as well to make my life easy. How would I change a 5 into a 15 times by? Top and bottom. 12 pi by 15. Alex, what's my denominator? What's 2 pi going to be then? 30 out of 15. Once I get bigger than 30, I'm going to quit. Is there an x3? Well, x3 is going to be the first value plus the period. What do you get? 14 pi by 15. Is that less than 2 pi? Yep. Is there an x4? Well, that's going to be the second value plus the period. I get 16 pi by 15. Is that less than 2 pi? Yes. Uh, is there an x5? Let's go back to x3, and let's see if we can, in our heads, add these two together. What is 14 pi by 15 plus the period? 26 pi by 15. You know what? There is an x5. 26 pi by 15. x3 plus the period. Third value plus the period. Is there an x6? I'll add the fourth value in the period. Let's see. The fourth value was this one. 16 pi by 15. And 12 pi by 15 is 28. Oh, hey, 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 hey. There is an x6. 28 pi by 15. Is there an x7? Oh, I hope not. Let's find out. Uh, if I add the period to this one, I'm over. This one had six answers. I didn't know that when I made this one up ahead of time. I figured it might have six. I figured with that fractional period, it might only have five. I wasn't quite sure where it was going to end up, where the cutoff was going to be. This one had six, just barely had six. What would the general solution be? Write the first two plus the period times n. That's how I deal with period changes. I would rather, Michelle, turn it into a question I already know how to solve. I don't like the way the textbook really emphasizes using the graphing calculator. Problem is your provincial has a non-calc section. And this could be, because you'll notice I haven't used a graphing calculator, this could be considered fair game on the provincial for the non-calc section. Will this be on your Valentine's Day test? No? Oh, well, solving that will be, and getting those, but not period change and the rest of it, not general solution. OK? What was that, Miguel? More homework? You want more homework? I would love to give you more homework. Number one, but instead of using a graphical approach, use an algebraic approach. 
Number five, use an algebraic approach. Ooh, secant, yes, secant. Now, I'm going to assign number six, but instead of two root three over three, this is really two over root three. That's, it's the one, two, root three triangle. They rationalize the denominator. Okay. Uh, nine. You know what? I'm going to go back and give you what I've given you three. I'm going to give you one more to practice. Let's see. I did say nine. I did. How about let's do two, but again, don't do a graphical approach, do an algebraic approach. So I've assigned one, two, five, six, and nine. Or was that a German student saying no? Sorry? I assigned number, I think I did, didn't I? One, two, five, six, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. Is that okay? Folks, you got 20 minutes left. Here's what you cannot do. I'm just going to sit and die until Friday on and out. Because you do have a test next class. You can either work on the review or you can start working because a lot of this homework, these three lessons, have very much overlapped with the skills that I'm testing on your Valentine's Day test. We've added stuff, but you've, we've been using the stuff from that. Okay. Um, use this time wisely, please. 